Risk is a board game about taking over the world. I played it all the time with my family growing up, but I haven't played it that much recently. The rules aren't that complicated compared to many modern games. You start with some territories, and your opponents start with other territories. On your turn, you collect new armies based on the territories you control. The more territory, the more new armies you get. You also get bonus armies for controlling entire continents and for having certain cards. You then use those armies to attack other players and take the territories. The way this is done is through rolling dice, which are the traditional six-sided dice. What I find interesting is that the attacking player gets to roll one more die than the defending player, but the defending player wins ties. So which is more advantageous, getting an extra die or winning ties? To find out, I wrote a short Python program. There are a couple ways to do this. One way would have been to randomly roll dice and tabulate the results. Do this a few thousand times and we'd have some rough percentages, a few million times and we'd have pretty good, though not exact, solution. However, in this case, we're only simulating the outcome of maximum five dice, three attacking dice versus two defending dice, which means there are only 7,776 possible results. As a personal rule of thumb, I usually figure that my computer running Python can handle thousands, millions, or tens of millions of runs of something no problem. Hundreds of millions and billions of runs can be done depending upon what I'm doing and how long I'm willing to wait, and hundreds of billions or trillions or higher is usually more than what I'd attempt to do on my PC. In this case, having less than 10,000 possible outcomes means we can just brute force through all of them. So here's how to resolve risk rolls. Both players roll the dice corresponding to the number of armies they're attacking or defending with. Whoever rolled more dice sets aside the lowest die after it is rolled so that both players are comparing the same number of dice. So with three attacking, two defending, we'd compare 2v2. You match the highest dice versus highest die and second highest versus second highest. Higher number wins and the defender wins ties. If you lose one of the pairings, you lose an army. Rolling three v2 dice, the possible outcomes are that either the attacker or defender lose two dice or that they each lose one. So running all 7,776 possible rolls, here are the outcomes. We see that the defender loses both dice 37% of the time, with each losing one die 34% of the time, and the attacker losing both 29% of the time. Obviously this result favors the attacker, though it's not quite as strong as I was expecting. Three attacking dice, two defending dice is one of the six possible pairings of dice. The other five all have different outcome percentages. For example, one attacker, two defenders, would strongly favor the defenders. However, since rolling more dice is always better for you if you have the armies to use, three attackers, two defenders is a stable equilibrium and is the most frequent situation. At least that's the case in games I've played. So the attackers have a small to moderate advantage. How does that affect who wins a given territory? Because even though you only roll three dice at a time, territories frequently have more than three armies, especially at the choke points between continents. Battles are fought over multiple rolls as the armies from each side get whittled down. I ran 100 scenarios, comparing everything from one attacker, one defender, to 10 attackers, 10 defenders. The attacks continued until either the attacker or defender was wiped out. For this, I actually did use a random number simulation. I ran a million runs for each grid square. The percentages show how frequently the attacker wins. For instance, 10 attackers, 2 defenders results in an attacker win rate of 99.4%, and the plucky defenders would only win 6 times in 1,000. Elsewhere, 10 attackers, 10 defenders is a more balanced 57% win rate for the attackers. Here was an unexpected result though. 3 attackers, 3 defenders. I would have expected the attackers to have the advantage, since they are rolling 3 dice versus 2 dice. Instead, they only win 47% of the time. When I investigated why this was, it's because the attackers start with a small 3v2 advantage, but if the attackers ever lose a die, then they are at a pretty severe 2v2, 1v2, or 1v1 disadvantage. Now, I'm honestly not sure what one would do with this information, because it completely discounts all of the interpersonal dynamics that occur in a risk game, like convincing one of your opponents to ignore you and attack someone else. This is Dubious Insights. Thanks for watching.